I think I've already unplugged the charger. So. How many did you get? Did you count them? Yep. She. Eight. Eight. Okay. Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. On our YouTube channel we talk about all things homesteading and try to implement some of those things on our rural 100 acres here in southern West Virginia. On today's video we're going to move Cam's chickens. Cam is my youngest son. And he has about 13, you have 13 chickens? <laughs> 13 chickens that um, he has, so it's his egg layers, and he uh, sells those, little side business he's got going on there. And if you recall, if, if those of you that watched our channel, quite a few months ago, we set up this electric poultry netting. It's our first uh, time using the poultry netting. Getting very common, everybody and the brother seems to use it. But we wanted to give it a try. And really been impressed with it. This is just a single section. I think it's 160 linear feet. And we put it around our garden. We wanted to kind of get dual purpose here. We wanted to have the chickens, of course, protected. And we wanted to protect our garden. We had just a little tomato stand here, about uh, 12 tomato plants. And they've about done the run their course here. So, and you can see here where I'm standing, we've definitely let the chickens uh, overgraze this. This was uh, more yard like grass and they've overgrazed it and and really eaten it down quite a bit but it's time to to move them because we're not really concerned about the garden we had the of course just the regular poultry netting here to keep the chickens out of it um, so we're going to move everything over the coop is mobile uh, we did a video about that still having some issues with those axles i'm just gonna have to go with a solid axle uh, but we're going to go ahead and move that just drag it forward and just bring it around the corner of the house here and get uh, everything on fresh, uh, get the chickens on fresh pasture. And again, we're not gonna be worried about the, uh, the garden at this point. So let's get moving. Well, this is our starting and ending corner right here. You can see the, the poles do get a little bit of a sag to them. I've noticed over time, I have to come just reseat re them in the ground because they start to lean in. And uh, they definitely ground out. We had some situations there where it grounded out a bit. You can see it even killed the grass uh, down around that area. But right here, this is kind of a crude way of setting up our uh, fence charger. Thing. But I just had the fence charger sitting on a, a bucket, the bucket on top of it, and then the electric wire running up through it. Of course, you know, the plastic bucket is an insulator, so it didn't uh, ground out there, and just my grounding rod. So this is my start and ending corner. So what we're going to do, instead of moving all this around, you know, it ain't broke, don't fix it type of thing. Uh, this is right here where uh, I'm standing and where the camera is sitting is where we want the chickens to have access to. So this is our starting corner. It went around this way back to here. Uh, and this is our ending. So I'm just going to disconnect. We're going to undo the fence here. And we're going to keep the starting corner where it is and we're just going to go this way and come back around. So we'll see how it goes. We're going to move the coop first to get it out of the way because the chickens are going to freak out. And uh, normally you do this after dark and close them down or have a way to confine them, but we're not doing that. We're going to open this up, move the coop over, so maybe they'll, they'll run to that if they're spooked. That's their home base. Uh, and then we can move the fence and keep them fenced in so they don't scatter all over the place.
Okay, so we've got our new pasture paddock laid out here, and obviously got a little bit of a little bit of a bow here. But that's what I like about these things. Of course, you can take this nylon string here and tie these guys off, take, take out your slack, and that allowed me to not have to um, relocate my charger. So I just use the exact same location, and. Uh, Obviously that saved me from having to reset my stake. Now again, uh, you can see my positioning of my charger was just temporary. It's, it's a poor man's way of putting something together. Um, ideally I need to have a, uh, a little stake that I can drive in the ground that's got a little shelter roof over top of the charger. That way I can just move around and drop it in. Now, right now we're still utilizing house electricity. The house is exactly behind the camera, just two feet behind the camera. So I'm using an extension cord to plug into the house to do this. As we move out, again, I'm really impressed with this poultry netting. We'll probably continue to use it, maybe even use it exclusively on the farm. Um, then I'll need solar chargers or battery powered chargers as we get away from the house. Okay, so the only issue as far as what else they need, we've got their housing, we've got their fencing. We need to move their water. Their water was hanging on one of my garden posts. And we use a bell water, so we need a place to hold the bucket higher than the water. So I'm going to use this, uh, I'm going to use this little wood rack that we have here, a firewood rack. It's made out of three-quarter inch rebar, so it's nice and heavy. And we're going to put it here in the shade, which, depending on the time of day, of course, will determine whether it's shade or not. Get a spot where we can get it leveled up. Sunk in the ground a little. And then I'm just going to take a crossbar. Okay, so just any scrap wood we'll lay across here to hang our bell. And I'm just going to tie the bucket. We'll see how that goes. All right, so just taking our basic bucket and bell here. Nothing fancy. even drain all the chicken backwash out of there. All right, so in this scenario, the bell needs to hang freely so it doesn't empty out, but the bucket can be fouled against the board. So what I'm going to do, We're not fortunate enough to have the bell be narrower than the span of the log rack, but we can get that about chicken height. How tall are your chickens? So I can move that wherever. And again, with the bucket, the bucket just has to be higher than the bell. So we can actually leave it like that. And I'll have my lovely assistant fetch some water. Would you like to fetch some water, lovely assistant? <laughs> I'm sorry, rugged assistant. Come this way, buddy. You need to come in this way. Trampoline's got us in the way.
All right, I think that's gonna work, isn't it? Yep, there's one. You ladies thirsty? Well, the chickens settled in quite nicely. They uh, liked all the new grass, found their waterer pretty easily. And it's funny how much time they spend walking around just poking into things and looking at stuff. Although I don't think they were too impressed with the camera there at the front door of the chicken coop. Well, we got everybody moved and the water set up. Um, spent, well, spent tomato action there for them. The grass here, um, where they were, obviously it's, it's worn down a little bit more than I like, but uh, as I mentioned, we were using that to protect the garden. Uh, but we've got about a month before our first frost, so that'll give us an opportunity to heal. Um, we're gonna come through and mow this and kind of let it, let it grow back up, maybe even possibly reseed, but I wanna expand our garden area back here next year, so I'm not too crazy about getting grass on it. We got some really good base soil to start with with all their uh, manure, so I may mulch this. We may, we'll see, we'll see what we do. But um, yeah, again, mentioning really, I really do like this poultry netting. Now I know you guys are like, well, dummy, it's been around for years. Everybody that does homesteading uses this poultry netting. And we've stayed away from it um, for a long time just simply because everyone I've seen use it uses it on really nice pristine flat areas. I've not seen anybody really use it on some some really rough terrain as we have. And um, so in, in moving it around here in different places, trying different low spots, high spots, those type of things, I've seen there's certain things I can do to, to tweak it if need be. I can even take, I've taken some other step-in posts, I don't have it set up now, but taken some other step-in posts and just stepped them here and even tied some string to it um, to keep these poles tighter if they're sagging um, because I've got a low spot or a high spot. So uh, over time I've seen that this is something that we can work with even with our uneven ground. So we're going to look, and it won't be till next year, but we're going to look at possibly um, just revamping our entire chicken operation and going with poultry netting. Now obviously I have to come up with a mobile coop and it has to be big enough to accommodate, I like to have about 75 to 100 egg layers. So it's going to have to be uh, much larger than what we have there. And we've seen the Salzen model. We've been to Polyface Farms twice now and we've seen his operation. And I really like how he has his mobile coop using running gear, farm running gear, but that's really, really heavy for what we want to do. I know he has 400, 500 chickens, I believe, per, uh, per one of his running gear. So that's a little bit more than what we need. Uh, but his, his hilly topography is laid out much more gradual than ours. Ours has much steeper, uh, narrow valleys and stuff. So I need something a little bit lighter as I move it around with my tractor. It needs to be a little bit lighter. I want a lower center of gravity and not as heavy of frame as running gear. So we'll be working on that this winter and see what we can come up with. So, but that's the takeaway. Um, this experiment we've had, I had the chickens here. I looked back on my calendar. We had the chickens here for three months in this spot, which is way too long to have in one particular spot that kind of defeats the whole purpose of rotating. Uh, but again, to, to be that barrier around the garden worked out really well. We didn't have any pests or predator issues or um, I don't know that you have tomato predators. <laughs> we, didn't have, we didn't have any deer pressure, I should say, or rabbits or anything like that coming in. Didn't even have any squirrels coming in and digging stuff up. So that worked out really well. Everybody likes to stay away from that electric fence. All right, well, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you haven't. Check us out on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash red toolhouse farm. And again, if you have a homestead channel or you, you have your favorite homestead channel, uh, send me information about it, and we'll put it in our directory. We're trying to build that directory up on redtoolhouse.com. All right, take care, everybody.